Okay, great. Okay, um, thank you for this. So take us through how this post happened. Okay, well, we, a couple weeks before um, I had made the post, I had talked to a father who called me. He was concerned. Uh, he had been to his daughter's basketball game. Uh, they had a few basketball games in a row and playing different teams, and a couple of the other teams uh, looked to him to have a boy on the team. And uh, concerned about whether his daughter was safe on the court, he approached the refs um, and, and asked a couple questions, and then they, he was pointed during a, a break in the game, and then he was pointed to the athletic director uh, and who pointed him to the principals. Um, he simply asked, you know, if, if this was a boy on the other team, uh, again, out of concern, and, and immediately he was shut down and he was told he can't ask that question because it's discriminatory and called a bigot um, and, and told, how dare you? That's a biological girl. So he was con he was concerned because he he just had a question he he didn't know, um, and that speaks back to you know policies that are happening and um, and how parents don't really know what's going on because they know uh, they may or may not know that there are circumstances that boys can play in girls' sports based on laws that have passed, um, but they don't know the details and so they look and they wonder. And they don't know how to resolve the issue. Um, and so he came to me uh, and asked. And I honestly didn't know how to, what to tell him because I know it's a sensitive issue and um, it's something that nobody really dares talk about. So, you know, a couple weeks later, I was sent uh, the picture that I ended up posting, the two pictures, by different fathers. Um, both concerned and not knowing what to think. I, I honestly didn't know um, if the girl that has the attention has been drawn to was a boy or a girl. I, so I made a post that was just objectively neutral. I said two words, girls basketball. No quotes around girls. I know that's something that's being said. Just an apostrophe after girls. Girls basketball. And I put it up. Um, to, to see what I don't the, the intent was never about the girl it was always about the policy issues and the confusion that parents are facing and the uncertainty and and they're not knowing how to have their questions answered they don't know how to ask and nobody seems to know how to have this conversation because if you say anything um, you are immediately attacked or, or you know, demonized. Um, and so, but it's a problem that's affecting many people. So I was, you know, hoping that we would have um, an opportunity to have a more of a policy discussion uh, around this. And so when I got on and I noticed after, you know, I was busy all that next morning, I posted the night before and I got on and I realized the direction it had taken where the comments that were being made were directed in a negative way towards this girl, I immediately was shocked. I, I thought it was, I called it a firestorm in my apology because to me it was a firestorm, but um, that looking at it now, it was nothing compared to what it's blown up into be, to be. Um, and so for the negative direction that it took that was completely unintended, um, I am deeply sorry uh, for any any hard feelings or negative outcomes from that post. And if I had to do it over again, I would never have made the post if I thought it could go that direction. So you wanted to have a policy discussion, though. That's that's that where my mind on. is because that's what I deal with on the board. And so that's that was my frame of mind. But, but can you see people who say, well, that's not the way to have a policy discussion. That's, that's taking a young girl and drawing her into these policy discussions, which are the, which are the purview of a school board, not a 15- or 16-year-old kid. Yes, and that's why I 
quickly apologized and I took it down. And I immediately tried to contact, uh, find a way to contact the parents. I had a couple of friends reach out um, that know both families. They told me how wonderful the family is. Um, they confirmed that it was a girl. Again, I didn't know one way or the other. That's why I didn't say one way or the other. Um, that was not my intent. My intent was the policy discussion and for that, uh, for drawing uh, attention to her in a negative way, um, that was, that was, I own that. That, that was uh, poor judgment and that's why I wouldn't do it again. When you say you own it, you, you mean what? That I should not have posted it. Um, so parents, you, you talk to parents of this girl, right? I tried. I reached out um, after finding out who they were. I immediately reached out. I sent a message to the father who had, mes who had messaged me. Um, and he was, you know, upset, but he seemed open to t talking about it. And I responded and I, I let him know, you know, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, it, if Basically, if I'd been in his shoes, I would have been upset too. Obviously, because but I hadn't been looking at it from that angle, and so I immediately, you know, I I was really grateful to see that he was so protective of his daughter and would go to her defense. And I actually told him that I wish that there were more fathers like him that would stand up for their daughters and and look out uh, for for all of their children. And this was a phone conversation with him. No, I I asked him if we could have meet I or see. have a phone conversation, it was a text. but. It was texting, and and he never responded. Um, it was through a, a social media, so I could see that he had seen it, um, but he never responded, which I felt terrible about. I think we could have avoided the huge media blow up um, and this the added spectacle um, or negative attention that it drew towards the girl mm -hmm. uh, if we could have just had that conversation and he could have known so, where my heart was and where I was coming from. So it was reported that the parents felt that you had apologized at one point, but your apology was insincere or less than sincere. Um, so that you never had the opportunity. Is that what I you're never had you the, the opportunity. opportunity I apologize. reached out. I tried. I asked if we could meet, if we could talk, and I and I just I feel bad that it, that never came about. I did make an apology on a public apology on my Facebook post, um, and I don't know if that's the one they were talking about. Um, it was a much more death. personal apology that I sent to them. And, and I made a more general apology for the public. I just thought that was more appropriate given um, the platform. And, you know, that apology uh, has been taken as insincere or non-apology when it was absolutely from the bottom of my heart. And, you know, people want to deconstruct it um, and read things into it um, that were not my, you know, they're, the way my apology has been framed is um, is other people's interpretation and not what was in my heart. I was I am deeply sorry for the harm. I am a mother. I'm a grandmother. I have children. I know. I know um, that that's that that's not a good thing. And I don't I don't want any I don't want to hurt any child. I've done nothing but try to protect children the whole time. That's been the whole focus of my time in office is trying to find out or how to protect children. So the reaction to this post surprised you? Oh, very much. What, what reaction were you expecting? I was just, uh, I, I just wanted to maybe have a conversation about uh, the fact that nobody can ask a question even so, around dad, this. That's what the dad told you. The father yeah. who initially was wondering about the makeup of the team. Right, but it, but it, you can see in our culture that if anybody brings it up, you know, they're immediately shut down in the general public. You just, it's like the subject is off limits and we can't have this discussion. Not, not in a real genuine way as far as how this is really affecting people because, so yeah, it, we just need to be able to have the conversation. Based on the reaction, do you think the girl is a victim, you're a victim, or both of you are victims? I would say the girl is absolutely an innocent victim in this. And, and for that, uh, again, I feel terrible. I have, I have 
really good people that comment on my posts that are usually very civil. And so it caught me completely by surprise. I didn't, I know that those kind of um, conversations are had in other areas of social media, but I've tried to be very careful to have the tone of the conversations on my posts um, very civil. And so, and the people that I, that I'm friends with that can, that comment are, are usually very good. And so, yes, it caught me completely by surprise. And you've already said, if you, were to, if you had to do it again, you wouldn't do it. Right. Um, there have been people who said, look, you know, the job of a school board member is to defend and protect kids. This seems well out of that realm. Do you agree? When I see it from other people's perspective, outside of what my perspective was when I posted it, I can see what they're talking about. And, and that's why I would, if I had to do it over again, I would not post it or do it that way. I would try to find another way. I'm still trying to figure out you know, the best way to address uh, the policy issue side of this um, so that we hoping we can have that conversation. Let's turn now to this election interference question, if we may. Um, in your letter to Rob Axon, the chair of the Republican Party, uh, and others connected to the party, you raised questions about election interference. Um, what do you see as the most egregious examples of that? Well, when you have a sitting governor and the lieutenant governor come out and, and make a denunciation against a candidate um, or an elected official that's running, uh, and they actively um, frame you in a in a very negative light and and condemn you in the public realm, and they attach the state seal to it, and then they actively promote, endorse, and contribute to the opponents or the the individual's opponent. Um, that's that to me is unconscionable. Um, that to me is absolutely election interference, uh, where they are favoring one candidate over the other, especially the lieutenant governor, who is over elections that should absolutely remain neutral, and and they're um, propping up my my opponent. And and then you've got the issue with um, the party, who's been calling and. The recording was played the other night on the news, one of those conversations where uh, the whole tenor of the conversation was around um, convincing me that there was no way forward, that my options were all dried up pretty much, and uh, basically trying to get me to resign without coming right out and saying. That's how you interpreted that phone call. Absolutely. That was a you better resign hundred percent. Yes. Uh, the, the party, is, I mean, they came right out and said, you will have no support whatsoever from the party. You know what the party's saying about that, though? They're saying, well, we don't, we don't have money to support a lot of candidates. And so you're, you know, we're, this is what the party's saying. I'm not, I'm, I'm just repeating what I've been told. This is, we don't have money to support a lot of candidates. And so, you know, telling you that, hey, you know, you're probably not going to get money from the party is not unlike a host of other people who are running for office. What do you make of that explanation? Well, you said money. They said any resources, any support whatsoever. And if a candidate wins at convention, they, the candidates are told that they have the support of the party, that they become the party's nominee, meaning the party will support them. So that conversation told me that even if I, you know, by some miracle, won at convention, that they would not support me because they, and they pulled in that comment about the governor because the, they said the governor is not inclined to retain my seat. But and that's, he, had, he had made public statements to that effect. I mean, he had already condemned the post. He had already said, you know, that there should be action taken against you for it. Um, Again, those, those, those statements were in the public record by that point. Correct. Well, and that's why I asked. I tried to clarify with him, and I said, what does the governor have to do with this? And he said, influence, which tells me that the party is taking things that the governor says and, and adjusting how they 
support or don't support a candidate. So you think the party's got it out for you? I think they're being unduly influenced. By the governor? By the governor, the media, um, others that have, have come out openly against me. So, so I think it's feeling like it's turned political instead of, uh, well, obviously it's political. It's a, it's a campaign season, so. Um, the majority leader said in response to your assertions about election interference, he said, you know, had, had you not posted what you posted, there would be no backlash. And so that was on you. Um, is he wrong? If they had um, some kind of legal analysis uh, done on that, um, I would, I, 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 take, I take responsibility for my post, okay? Um, what it has turned into, though, is far more than what it should have been. Um, again, there, it seems to be uh, politically motivated to continue to blow it up over and over and over again, constantly for the last week on the news. Um, we've seen other actions um, by other leaders that uh, have been given very different treatment uh, or no treatment at all that are far more egregious, in my opinion. What, what's, what's the reason? Why, why are you a target when those other people, in your view, are not? That's a good question. Um, we get one in every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think perhaps it's because I, I am outspoken and I speak very openly about the problems that I see I, in my effort to be transparent to my constituents because that was what I ran on. Um, I, I said that I was going in to deal with certain problems that I saw in the system and one of those um, is about uh, the things that are being taught and being brought in, and the undue influence um, in our schools from national and, and global agendas. And, um, but I think our policies are all wrapped up in those national and global agendas. And so for me to come in and be outspoken about those and shine a light on them um, is disruptive to the system. And so those that have um, given all of their time and energies to building that system and making it more and more resilient to um, the, so that the things that they're weaving into the system can't be undone um, are not appreciative of someone that comes in and shines a light on those problems because it's hard to undo those once they're entrenched. S some say that, you know, it's not just this one time that you've had kind of a track record since being in office of drawing attention, um, facing criticism for some of the things that you have said, um, and that this is part of a pattern. Is it part of a pattern, and are you trying to be harmful when you make these controversial statements? No. I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm trying to be transparent. I'm trying to bring light to issues that um, I have researched in depth and that are affecting the education of our children. Um, there's, I have, I have been consistent. I wouldn't call that, a, I mean, they say a pattern of behavior as if it's a negative thing. I have been consistent in bringing light to what is happening at the board level, at the state board level, what's happening in the schools. Um, and again, I think it is not appreciated by those within the system that want it to continue to move in this more um, progressive direction, um, which I see as a very regressive direction and harmful to our, our freedoms and our liberties um, and to our, the innocence of our children. You used the term unconscionable a moment ago in discussing the backlash, the reaction 
to this, and including, I think, the negative, the, the post that you said you were not expecting. The governor, though, has said, well, your actions have been unconscionable, and the legislature has now censured you um, for, for the post. Um, are they wrong? Well, I think of this, I, I think the, the double standard is unconscionable. Double standard compared to whom? So you've got individuals like, like the governor back when uh, the incident with the BYU volleyball team uh, where they said somebody was yelling racist things at, a, at one of the visiting players. Um, and he called that, they, they determined it was one individual in the stands, uh, a BYU fan that happened to be an autistic boy and the governor posted that this boy was a racist a-hole. Um, was there a backlash against that where he was actually targeting not just a child, this wasn't a child, it was an adult, but a childlike individual um, that was autistic and accusing, you know, going after him uh, for something he actually didn't ever say. Where was this huge blow up on something like that? But because of his position, I suppose, um, there was no backlash, and he was able to take it down and not apologize, and, and nothing more was said. There's another instance with um, Senator Nate Bluen, who back, I think it was in June of last year, during Pride Month, um, you know, he posted a picture of a 13-year-old boy in drag twerking and said, this kid's got moves. So an actual child that is being harmed or exploited for the sexual pleasure of an adult male audience that was watching, um, that's not harmful. I've, again, I have, the double standard is hugely problematic, that they can hold one elected official to one standard and, and one to a, a completely different standard. Um, that's not okay. And that's what you think is going on here with you? I think because I... I am shining light on things that they are trying to get into place uh, to create these the t system of the uh, a twenty first century system for education. They're they're not happy with me, and I know I've spoken out against many bills that I see pushing us in those harmful directions. Based on my research that I I do nonstop to try and uncover what these uh, programs and policies and initiatives are that are coming into our school. And, and I don't think that they appreciate when I speak out against a bill that in the past may have just flown through because uh, I don't think people are researching what these policies are that are being put in place. Why do you want to stay on the school board? I mean, given all of this, what, what's your motivation to stay? The same thing, same reason I ran in the first place. I have, I have no other desire than to protect the children of our state and to protect uh, their freedoms and liberties and their innocence. That's all I've ever cared about. And I feel deeply, uh, it, that is my purpose and my passion is to help protect kids. That's why it, it's ironic that this has all happened when I've done nothing but work as hard as I can every day. In, in office to help parents and to protect children by exposing the things that are I see as harmful to ch children. Considering resigning? No. You won't resign? No, there's too much work to be done. And I, I've, and as, as long as my constituents want me there, I will be there and I will continue to be a voice for them. So what about your race for re-election? You're going to, going to keep up your race for yes. the election? If, they, if my constituents want me there, uh, I will. I think that is the proper process. That's our democratic process, is that the ultimate accountability comes at the election. And I, so, you know, as far as um, other measures that have been taken against me, um, that uh, our Senate and House leadership call unprecedented, um, in taking their actions against me yesterday or the board taking against me. Um, that is, I am in here for the people and, and to bring light and understanding and, uh, and that transparency that 
so many in the legislature say that they want they want the schools to be more transparent. I'm actually bringing the transparency, and it's um, and it's appreciated by many, many in the state. I've I've heard from countless parents who have thanked me for bringing to light what is actually happening, um, the deeper um, workings of of the system that they never understood or knew before, and they are deeply grateful for the light that I have brought to the to these issues. And to the people who say, this is not the way to do it, what you did, that post is not the way to do it, you say... I say, you can't step into this arena without making mistakes. And there's not a single person that has gotten into office that has done everything perfectly. But I have, I have, done, my, uh, I have done my very best. Um, and it's not always appreciated, again, by, by people with, in that policy realm. Uh, maybe they don't like my style, but I have worked tirelessly to, to bring things to light and help educate the people um, that I represent and to try to be their voice where they are not otherwise heard. You think you'll win? I hope. I mean, if the people want me there, I am happy to continue serving. Some people out there might say, well, you're "Crazy!" You know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm not yeah. speaking to my, for myself. I'm saying some people might say, "That's crazy!" It's crazy that she's not resigning. Crazy that she's not leaving the campaign. Crazy that she thinks she might win. That that is what I think. Some people yeah. watching this might say, and to you, to them, you say, "What?" I say, "Make your decision at the ballot box," and I am fine with whatever way the the voter decides. I think that is what uh, government for the people and of the people is all about, and and that's the way it needs to happen. Otherwise, if we continue to move uh, in the path that we have been going, um, which is unprecedented, this kind of cancel culture of elected officials. Imagine the chilling effect that is going to have on elected officials being able to have hard conversations. Um, policy, policy making is all about hard conversations and, um, and being able to have these really tough debates about these issues. And if they feel for a minute that their unpopular opinion might get them canceled forever by their fellow legislators or their fellow board members. Are we ever going to be able to really have um, strong policy debates again? Or are people uh, in those positions going to start, going to start self-censoring um, for fear that they might say the wrong thing and, and be censured by their peers in those positions? That's not what America is about. That's not what it was ever meant to be. And it sets a really bad precedent moving forward. If you were to be reelected, what would change with you in a second term? I will continue to do the work that I've been doing. And while also trying not to step on the, on the myriad of landmines that have been created, in this um, cultural revolution that we seem to be going through right now. Do you have a recording, any other recordings with um, individuals, uh, decision makers, office holders um, that, you have, that you have taken in the last few weeks? For instance, the House leadership meeting that you had at the Capitol, did you record that? And if you did, would you release it? Well. When I go into meetings like that, I assume that somebody's recording, um, even if it's a private meeting. And so I often will record in those kind of situations just so that I have my own record. It's just for my own. And that's what you Just did. for my own, because so many times, you know, my, what I say is taken out of context or twisted or words are put in my mouth that I didn't say. And so I just keep that for my own record so I can go back and review it and, and make sure I remember it accurately so I'm not misrepresenting. So you, you do have a record of that? Then. I do. You do. Okay. The, the recording that you released to us, um, 
Why did you decide to release that? I mean, what, what was your motivation then? If, if, if the recordings are for your record, um, why, did, why was it important for that one to be public? Well, when you, there are claims that were made in that conversation um, that others on the, the State Central Committee um, could not uh, co corroborate. So it was a question of, is he being honest, and is this election interference? Um, because you've got, you've got the state board, you've got the governor and the lieutenant governor, you've got the legislature, um, and you've got the party, all pressuring me to essentially resign. And to me, that's highly problematic. They need to let the process play out and let the voters, the delegates, and the voters decide. Natalie Klein, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming and visiting. Appreciate uh, getting your perspective. Yes. Thank you. So.